your book, um, Concealed, you know, it's a, it's a riveting title. It's the kind of title that you just want to pick up the book and read it. Uh, what made you come out of concealment and open up uh, Mashad and open up your life, your family life, your parents' life um, to the world and write about it? I mean, that, I find that fascinating that you were able to do that, that you decided to do that, and, you, and that you had the guts to do it. Well, oh, thank you, Sue. It wasn't easy. I mean, it took decades, decades and decades of thinking about it. Um, I mean, I have to go back and just remind you that my parents were underground Jews. They were crypto Jews in the city of Mashhad, and my ancestors were as well. And this went back generations. Uh, they had to hide their true identity. They had multiple identities. My mother would pretend she was Muslim. She would wear the black chadar, look through eye slits. Um, when she stepped out of the house, my father would pray in the public square five times a day from the Quran, even though they were devout Jews in the secrecy of their home, in the privacy of their home they practiced Judaism. And so there was this duplicity uh, for generations. Right after World War II, they brought my two brothers and themselves to New York, right after World War II. And a few years later, I was born. So the history of concealment uh, was certainly in their DNA and it was transferred to me. There was no question about that. There's a, um, there's a transfer of the fear of the outside world, the fear of being truly yourself. Um, I had to hide me because the values were so different. My father grew up in a world where girls were not educated and could not learn to read and write. They were prevented from, from, from being literate. Um, and here I am going to school, going to public school, learning to read and write. Uh, he objected strongly, so I had to do that under the covers. I had to do that in bed with a blanket over my head and a flashlight. Um, he believed that girls should not think that a thinking woman would be dangerous, would be detrimental to uh, marriage that it would upend uh, a happy matrimonial life. Uh, and here I wanted to think, I wanted to hear what other people thought. I wanted to find out what I think. Uh, and so my father certainly didn't want me to go to college and there's a whole chapter on that. And it's, now it's humorous when I read it. Back then it was painful, but I had to forge his signature and I had to, find all kinds of ways to get myself to Barnard. And he went on a suicidal hunger strike uh, when I wanted to move into the dorms. So again, it's coming out of concealment, but I also didn't want to lose him. I wanted to have my parents, the relationship, the tie. And at the same time, I wanted to have me. I wanted to be able to hold on to me. Um, and I had to live through all of this for over 60 years to be able to stop and say, okay, now I've got perspective. I have a, I'm thinking about it differently. I'm not thinking about it like a five-year-old or a 15-year-old. How do I bring it together? How do I share that story? It needs to be told. Um, no one that I know has written a memoir from the city of Mashhad uh, because it's compared Mashhad very often to the Murano, the Mashadis are compared to the Muranos of Spain. And there are no memoirs coming out of the Jews from Mashhad. And I figured if I don't write this, it won't be written. So there was that urgency, but also writing enabled me to integrate the humor, the pain, the confusion that I felt as a child, as an adolescent, as a young adult, and it was enlightening. Um, 
memories returned. I gained insight into family and ancestors. Uh, so it was significant for me to do it on many levels, not only to share the story, but to integrate the story. 